All right, it is 827 West Coast time. It is time for the Sunday Night Talk. Omar Carmona is here. Me, Patrick Ramirez. We just wrapped up Chiefs Falcons. Surprising, a surprisingly good game. Yeah, we needed this game today because this week was quite, quite uneventful. Both yours and my teams lost in very different ways, I would say, today. That's why I got my, my Raiders hat on backwards today. They get no camera right, time. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do it backwards because we know. <laughs> I give them no camera. I just have a black shirt, no Raiders emblem. I had my lucky Madden picture with me today. Nothing, nothing helped. We're going to. We're going to get to it. Kansas City, Atlanta. Like I said, we needed this game. Omar, there's a hint of fall, and it's week three, which is, I I don't know if it's secretly or publicly, but it's my favorite marker of the year, the third week in the NFL. We can kind of start to say who's good, who's bad, who we like, who's Who's making a splash. Who's pretending. Yeah, I don't know if we answered all those questions today because there were some there were some head scratchers, but I love week three because we've got an odd number of games and everybody's been home, everybody's been away, and now we can let the dust settle and we can look at the stats with a decent sample size, don't you think? I agree with that. I agree with that. What do you think? I love it. I lo- I yeah. I love it because I mean we all we got more questions to ask now, but I just think three weeks of football is enough to say the season has officially started. Week one, I throw out. Week two, I'm willing to discard. But week three, I, I'm i starting to see some some consist- consistencies at this point. Well, we got KC Atlanta happen tonight. And Omar, the game just wrapped up. KC wins 22-17. Did the Chiefs escape again? Yes, they did. Yeah, but... you, they, and isn't this the third week in a row? But... Can, can we also say, even in Brady's heyday, he he escaped, you yeah. know, and, and so he had to find a way to win, and and so I'm you know kind of seeing that with 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 Patrick Mahomes now he's he's reached a level where he's getting all the calls, the interceptions are getting called back, you know, um, they're they're getting you know there's flags on the play, and so the the, the, the his interceptions are miraculously thrown out, you know. And so he's getting these breaks and, you know, they're winning tough games. You know, the rest of the league is naturally going to catch up and close the gap to the best team at some point. And so I think we're seeing teams play these, you know, play the Chiefs uh, a lot tougher, but they're surviving. And so they're still finding a way to win. They got the breaks early. They didn't get them late on that last drive, which was three Kansas City penalties. Right. uh, Which, um, and if you really start to, comb through that previous drive by Atlanta, there was a pass interference that did not get called, which I thought was way closer than Chris Collinsworth, Mr. Sunday Night Football, uh, said. But that was a close one, too. So I, I think this is more KC defense tonight than it was KC offense. Agreed. You know, Atlanta defense was really up to the challenge today. And we had primetime cousins, which... I can't give him the award now, but like if he'd won this game, I had him down for who won the week, and that would have included Monday night. As I, I well. can't believe they I didn't I can't believe they didn't convert that fourth and inches. That <laughs> I think it's almost inexcusable at let's, home. Yeah, I wrote down the sequence right here. Let's let's talk the the last drive. First of all, the Falcons get the ball back with two twenty six, down five, two KC pen were they like in a row? Two Kansas City penalties. Right. Put the ball on the 37 yard line. Then there's a horse collar penalty. And then Atlanta can't convert fourth and inches. So, where did Atlanta go wrong here on this drive? The play call, what happened? I I, I think it was a bad, it was a bad sequence, a bad play calling. Um, and, and I, it just didn't seem like they, they knew what they were doing. The, the, the play calling seemed kind of just inept, you know? I, I don't know what I still don't know exactly what Atlanta's good at. I think this was their best game. They were mm-hmm. running the ball though. Just those swing out passes that almost every team does, those swing out passes either either have the potential to gain twelve yards or lose four. It, right. They seem so random and so potentially dangerous, although Atlanta was fairly decent 
with them today. And I th- wrote at the top of my notes, Atlanta and, and um, Cousins were really sharp early in this game. They were. They, they were ready, the defense and Cousins himself. But like anything else, Kirk Cousins, he's going to give you a chance, defense. He's <laughs> going to give you a chance. <laughs> he's going to give you a pick six chance. He's going to give you a fumble. I think one fumble got called back or something, or one yeah. was in, incomplete when they ruled it a fumble. Um, he's struggling to hand off the ball sometimes too, oh. Kirk Cousins. <laughs> that. And, and yet, sometimes he's brilliant. And we saw it this last Monday night. I don't know why I didn't think Kirk Cousins was not going to win that Monday night. He always does this. He's Mr. October. He's going to be good for four weeks straight, Omar. And he's going to trick us again this season. You watch. We're going to be like, it, is Kirk Cousins it, good? It, it, that's, that's a Kirk Cousins. It's a, it's, a, it's a hallmark of Kirk Cousins. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, Collinsworth and Tariko called another great game. Collinsworth was on fire, as usual. There's a part where Cousins did that. There was that um, play where Cousins kind of bobbled the snap. And he yes. kind of juggled it to the running back. And Collinsworth is just like, Mike, ah, ah, I've never seen anything like that, Mike. And Mike says, well, it's the first day of fall. I didn't know that either, Mike. These guys make the game 10 times more fun to me. The, the, they, were, they, were, they were in rare form tonight. How about the one where, um, who kicked the field? Butker missed an extra point or something, and it hits the flag. And Collins was like, Mike, Mike, do your thing. Do your thing about flag football, Mike. Tell us. And Mike Tirico's kind of like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Now's not the time. Right. <laughs> so back to the game. <laughs> back to the game. Is Travis Kelsey on this Kansas City team anymore? What's going on with him? Yeah, it's, he's, he, it's not the start he wanted. Uh, and a, Another quiet night, right? I, what, did you get his stat line? I got four catches for 30 yards, and there was one catch that got punched out that he caught and was knocked out of his hands, too. Do you think he's injured? Do we have any notion of what's going on with him? I, I know I know where the blame what the blame's gonna be at the end of the day with the media, but you know, mm-hmm. I don't think that's necessarily it either. No, that's not it. But you gotta think there's some there's some stress because we got he's, he, look, he, he's here's the problem with, with, with his situation. He's being seen at the U.S. Open. Again, with Mahomes. Right, right? yeah, Mahomes is there too, yeah. That was but a couple again, weeks ago, though. But I, I, I'm saying, you know, Kelsey's a Hall of Famer, but, you know, Mahomes is going after GOAT status, you know what I mean? So he obviously knows what he's doing, okay? And I, you know, I, mean, I think Kelsey knows what he's doing too. But then, you know, you look at, you know, he's being seen all around. And not only that, I mean, he's being... He, not only at his sporting events, but there's now, you know, he goes to Hollywood events, you know, and entertainment events and he and his brother do the podcast. And Mm -hmm. so he's going to make himself like, they're going to be, they're going to be criticizing him, you know, for, for the things he's doing. Cause, and then if he's going to be doing all this stuff, he's going to have to perform. Yeah. He hasn't. Well, that's why I asked, cause he's been doing these, the podcast for a number of years though. This isn't the first year he's, he started. Right, but I'm saying, but I'm thinking everything builds up and it's keeping you busy. So, and that's you think it's taking away his time. What, what's, what's going on? They're they're not targeting him that much anymore, though. It's not as if he's underperforming. He's just not involved. In this I, I, I'm saying I'm, I'm I'm saying it's a football reason why what's what's going on with him. I'm saying what I'm saying is the media is going to be talking about all this other stuff, and so again. When you're, if you're going to be doing all this stuff, I'm just saying you got to be performing. Yeah. You know? Because, because then the question, you can't get upset when the questions start coming in. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's going to be upset. I think just the question is, cause his numbers are his numbers. I think just the question is like, why, why does he only have four catches? Why is he involved less in the offense? So is there, is there an injury or is right. he slower? Is he, um, I yeah. mean, someone should do the, do the stats of like has he played less downs? Yeah. Than last year, I, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with him because he was producing a lot more last year at this time, and it hasn't happened. And the Chiefs have won all these games, of course. So instantly, a lot of cri- criticism goes out the window because they right. are they're winning, they're escaping these three games, but they're winning. So I, I 
I think that's my question with the Chiefs. If we were to play devil's advocate and say, what's wrong with the Chiefs? Kelsey is question number one. Their running back status is a question mark. They got this, the, the white dude with long hair who's serving a pretty good uh, backup role in there, but I can't help but think they need some other hands on this, uh, on this running back core. They do. So, they're, they're, that, that's going to be a problem. But they've won three. So they're getting out of these games with wins. They just have that winning swagger right now. It's, it's interesting what the Chiefs are doing. And I think Atlanta let this game slip. And yeah. I guess you could say that about all three Chiefs wins, though. Like, I don't know even know if this is a, a good take anymore because on the road, the Chiefs somehow escape with it. Again, because the, the Atlanta could move the ball on this team. They only got 17 points. Yeah, I'm with you. They could move the ball. So I'm a little bit confused, disappointed for Atlanta, but the winners win games, and that was the Chiefs today. I got one. Oh, no, I'll save it for the awards. But I thought it was a great game tonight because we needed a premier game today because there were some weird games going on today, and I thought the stadium looked good. I thought the shots of uh, people tailgating and getting food looked really good too in Atlanta. And then did you catch the Arthur Blank Hall of Fame induction at halftime? I didn't catch that. Yeah, he got inducted to the Ring of Honor of the Atlanta Falcons, which I didn't know... I didn't know the owner of the team could be inducted into the ring of honor. Could you? I guess it makes sense. I mean. Who inducts them though? Himself? Yeah. The people you (laughs) employ. (laughs) Yeah. I was, I was wondering about that. I like, well, doesn't he own the team? Can't he just induct himself whenever he wants? But that looked good. What do you think about Atlanta? Okay. Let's shift from Kansas city. Is Atlanta a threat? They because could be. They got. They, they were got fun potential. against Philly last month. They have. They have potential. What they do you mean potential. potential? Are we talking playoff potential? Possibly. I mean, hmm. they're, they're they're in a. I still think they're in an open division. I mean, you saw we can, we're going to move on to, soon to, to the Chiefs and 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 Bucks, but they. I mean, not not Chiefs, Saints and Bucks. They both lost games. They yeah. arguably should have won. You know, so maybe it's an open division. Maybe these teams aren't that great. I mean, talk about a letdown. New Orleans was a letdown. Yeah, I have them in a in a category coming up as well. Kirk Cousins went 20 for 39. Sorry, 20 for 29, 230 yards, one touchdown, one pick, two sacks. Um, and the only really thing, there was that weird kind of uh, interception that we talked about, but he did miss that one receiver on that last drive that he needed to lead him a little more, put a little more air under it. You know, he's one of those quarterbacks that drops back and I just get kind of nervous. Right. And and I kind of put Dak in that category, at least for the first three quarters of his game today. It's like, I just get nervous when that first read isn't there. Right. You know, it gets a little hairy. And I'm like, here comes the tip ball. Here comes the sack fumble. Yeah. Here comes something, you know. I think there should be a stat, because um, we take stats for completions, interceptions, touchdown. There should be a stat for near interceptions. Because I think Kirk Cousins would lead that category. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'd be up there too. He'd what do you think about there. that? We could keep a, a stat for dropped interceptions. You okay. Know, be like, hey, you know what? You throw a lot of potential interceptions. You get you call it the, you like got the lucky an, error, an error in baseball. <laughs> right, right. And it's not really charged to the defense. It's charged to the quarterback who threw the dumb interception. So I like that. Okay, what about the Chiefs? Legit? 3-0? Of Best course, they're legit. The... They're, they're 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 right now the number one team, and the 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 targets on their back. You gotta you gotta beat them to be the champ. Okay, so I'm inclined to believe you, and I I can't exactly point to any stats why, but you can't say you're not the champ until the champ loses. You know they have the belt until they're beaten. Right, is my thought there. All right, we agree on that. Let's take a look at the Chiefs' schedule for a second here. Like, let's is there anyone that can trip them up? Right now, let's take a look. Okay, so the three and oh, they have the Chargers next week, they have the Saints the week after, they have your 49ers the week after. So I could see them going two for three out of those, like one silly loss type of thing, but I could see them winning all three of those games too. Yeah, I agree. What do you think they go those next three weeks? Do they win them all or do they win? They can win two or no? 
I think they'll at least win two. You think they'll you'll we'll we'll put some money on it. What do you think? They'll go three and oh, two and one? I'm gonna say they're gonna go three and oh. Three and oh. But even with your 49ers there, huh? No, this is, if we're unhealthy, we're not gonna it's not gonna be a good game. All right, do you wanna okay before we go to the games? I got a list since it is week three. I got our three and O's and I got our O and threes. Let's go through the list and and rank these teams. Three and O's are Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Seattle, Kansas City. I'm uh, got a question mark by Buffalo because they play tomorrow. So three and O's. Who's the best of those three? I think we agreed it's Kansas City. Yeah, it's Kansas City. Okay, number two. I'm gonna go with the Vikings. Okay. They looked really good today. They, they, they've been, they, they, but here's the thing: they've been playing good football on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sam Darnold, another good day today. That leaves us Pittsburgh and Seattle. I'm gonna go Seattle next. Seattle next, Pittsburgh fourth. There. Is it surprising Pittsburgh and Seattle are three and zero? You know what? It is surprising. I'm, I'm gonna switch it. I, I, I misspoke. I'm gonna put Pittsburgh ahead of Seattle. Really? What? Why'd you change your mind all of a sudden? There? You think, flip-flopped on me, Carmona. I think I think the Pittsburgh defense is better than the Seattle defense. Yeah, remember last year Pittsburgh got really injured on defense, and this year yeah. they're humming. They're humming. They were they were really good today. And then Seattle. Yeah. Okay, let's assume Buffalo wins tomorrow. Where do you rank Buffalo? I, I put them. I put them ahead of Pittsburgh and um, Seattle. Behind Minnesota? Behind Minnesota, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. I thought you would have bumped them up higher. Those are the three and O's. All right. The O and threes. Tennessee. Jacksonville plays tomorrow. Cincinnati plays tomorrow. Let's assume they lose. O and three. Tennessee, Jacksonville, Cincinnati. Who's the best O and three? I think it's... It, it, well, no. Jackson... Uh, ja- oh, yeah. Jackson. So it's Jacksonville, Tennessee, Cincinnati... Yeah, Jacksonville and Cincinnati play tomorrow, so they're only 0-2 right now. Right. Well, no, not necessarily, right? Because, yeah, you're right, you're right, right. Yeah. They, but they um, play different games tomorrow. Right. Yeah, there's two Monday night games tomorrow. That's right. Um, Jacksonville, to me, is the... Ooh, Cincinnati's the better team. Yeah, uh, I got that, too. And then I'll go Jacksonville. Yeah, Tennessee, it looks <laughs> like, a, like a garbage fire. Tennessee. So do you think Jacksonville, which team turns it around, Tennessee or Jacksonville? Do does Cincinnati, does Tennessee... beats, Cincinnati beats Washington tomorrow. Yeah, they play Washington, so it's a good chance they'll win. So if we come down to Tennessee and Jacksonville, do you think any of those teams turn it around? Jacksonville can turn it around. Tennessee, I, no I, way? I have faith Levis, no way. <laughs> Levis. Oh, I just thought of this hot take. Will Levis is a young Kirk Cousins. <laughs> oh, God. You know, he's going to give you one or two chances defense. He can move around a little bit better, but he'll still fumble it or throw a pick six today like he did. He's very consistent, that Will Levis. Now, I'm, I am not a huge fan. Okay, so now I've got a list of who is the best 2 and one team out there and who is the worst Two and one team out there. I have Detroit as my best two and one. They're the best. Yeah, they're the best two and one. You agree? Yeah. Other like other two. There's a ton of two and ones out there, I, like uh, Tampa Bay. Um, I think New Orleans is a bet is better than Tampa Orleans. Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, New Orleans didn't look so good today. That that you know this crazy offense did not look good. Um, yeah, against a in, you know, against I, sad you know, Philly. Oh, you know. You know Eagles may be the best two and one team. Really? Over Detroit, huh? I think you trust I think the Eagles. I do. I really, really do. Really? I don't trust the Eagles. They look well, remember last year we fell in love with them because they went like ten and oh. Right. And the I, season could not have ended any worse for them. I want to get another team for you. If he's healthy, Justin Herbert's got the best two and one team. Interesting, because you know which team I have as the worst two and one team is yeah, the, the LA Chargers. Chargers. Oh no, I think they're a lot better than that. They didn't look good today against the Steelers. Before they, Herbert got injured, he looked bad. That 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 Steelers defense is tough, man. Like they're mm-hmm. tough. 
I, I, I haven't seen more. anything that looks good about the Chargers yet. And I'm worried think. about Herbert. He went into that game injured though, right? That's a problem. Yeah, so we got a huge question mark. And when he went out, the Chargers had zero offense. <laughs> Taylor Taylor uh, Heineke, which I now call Heineke Zero, <laughs> could he, not he, do anything there. He was zero calories. He um he could not. Yeah, he did not move the ball well. But, you know, Herbert, he basically w- couldn't even walk off the field. Yeah, um, it was kind of scary for a minute there. Yeah. Yeah, because um, he fell down on the sidelines. And so... Uh, we'll see. Uh, I I I think that the I think they're a good team. Um, the the Bucks to me are the ones that man they just look terrible. And you know everyone's singing their praises after that big that big win in Detroit, and then they come out here and just stink it up again at home against the Broncos against Bo Nix and the Broncos. That was sad. Yeah, it was weird. That was one of the early games, which all the early games were kind of bad today, yeah. and there was a ton of them. There was. Seven early games? There was seven early games t- this week. So Denver, Tampa Bay, I was like, oh, let me watch the score. And I ended up watching none of that game. Like there was other games I was keeping an eye on. But this was the game where I'm like, wait, I thought Tampa Bay was good. <laughs> they were, yeah, they were good. They lost 26 to 7 at home. Bo Nix looked kind of good today. Yeah. He had 260, and and he ran for a a TD either. Maybe Sean Payton changed his sunglasses. I didn't get a look. Did you? I I didn't check it out. I didn't didn't, didn't didn't see. see. Maybe maybe the old lady's sunglasses worked for him. I don't know what's going on with Tampa Bay there. Chalk it up to a throwaway loss, something. Any any concerns for you with Tampa Bay there? Big time. Yeah. What what, what happened? uh, Just on both sides of the ball. Just you know, the defense wasn't getting off the field, and and the offense just couldn't move it. So I was, it was problems on both sides of the ball. I'm a little concerned because one of these teams that started hot, like New Orleans, Tampa Bay, or Detroit, or something, or Minnesota, is going to have a slide. You know, like these are not going to be playoff. Not everybody's going to be a playoff team of these three and O's and no. good to it. So who's going to slide? And Tampa Bay, I think, of all the head scratchers today, had that most. Potential by a little bit over New Orleans, but Tampa Bay looked bad today. I don't know yeah. what that was. Blame who can we blame? Let's blame Baker. You know, another good team. I think another good two and one team. The, 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 the Texans are a good team. That was the Minnesota no. one. No, another no, early no. game. Now, now Minnesota humbled them for sure. But mm-hmm. but again, I'm still sticking with my pick. They are going to be representing the AFC in the Super Bowl this year. So Tampa Bay, big concerns in their loss. Houston, no concerns no, no in their loss for you. No time to panic. They're still a young team, um, and they got handled. So I hope they take this ass kicking as a, you know, l- lick your wounds and, and learn a lesson. You know. Do you think Sam Darnold can keep this up? Is he the Cinderella so far? And, oh, that'd be something. I turn hope, in? You know Who's? I hope so. I hope so. Well, what do you think though? Like, when is the bu- bubble going to burst for Sam Darnold? He's got weapons. You're you confident know? then. I'm. I mean, huh. I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I mean, I'm not expecting him to make an All Star team. You know, the, the, I'm not. I'm not expecting him to be in the Pro Bowl. But I don't think. I don't think him being in the Pro Bowl would even would. He doesn't have to be in the Pro Bowl to have a successful year as Sam Darnold. So just the fact that he's three and zero, that's a success right now. So let's you know yeah. let it ride. And you think he can keep this going? You don't think defenses can figure him out? One bad game loses the confidence. You think he's rolling, huh? I think I mean, let's let, I'm, I'm not saying he's rolling right now. Yes, let him. But let's just let him roll. I don't. Let's you know he's getting ready for a game next week. Let's let him do that. Would you say he's the biggest surprise so far of the first three weeks? Oh yeah, by far. Yeah, like who else is in there? Sam Darnold, maybe Derek Carr. Well, Baker. After after today, Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, yeah, Andy Dalton had a good had a good surprise today. Let's look at Minnesota's next few games. Let me see how far these three and teams can go. Of course, we know KC is the best one. Does Minnesota play next week? Because they look sharp on both ends of the ball, defense and offense. They've got weapons. Yep. 
It's impressive. And I like their home stadium. I think Minnesota might secretly have the best home stadium. I, I like it a lot. It's got that nice, like, that shadow. That, the that, light yeah. comes in. Yeah. It's yeah, got okay. that greenhouse. It's like a, they're playing in a greenhouse. Yeah, and for a, a stadium in a very cold weather location, you can. I think it can close up. That's yeah, vital. It, yeah, it opens and closes, yeah. Okay, so... Next week, the Vikings play the Packers. That's an interesting test. Then the Jets, then the Lions. That could be three really hard weeks. So I guess we are going to have an answer to the Sam Darnold question in these next three weeks. Tough schedule. Because then the Rams after that, Colts, and then Jags. So, okay, we will get to have an answer about the Sam Darnold thing in the next couple weeks. Right. Uh, moving on. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go? <laughs> I wrote. I wrote some thumbs downs by these games. Do you want to go? New York Giants, Cleveland. Let's. Let's. let's okay. Or... Let's, start there. let's not waste time. Let's just not waste time. It's not. It's not. We don't need to spend more than sixty seconds on this game. Oh, Both do you want to just give Daniel Jones the Kirk Cousins award and just yeah, move let's, on? Let's just do that. <laughs> the I Kirk Cousins it. award is the guy we hate, but somehow is good for a week. You know, and this is the problem that scares me about Jacksonville. It's like I'm looking at this Browns team that the Cowboys annihilated and this incompetent Giants team, in my, you know, handled today. And it's like, how did the Jaguars lose to these Browns last week? You know, Yeah, there's 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 some things that just don't add up. And some of these, this team beat this team, but they lost to this team. It's really confusing. The Giants were dead and buried a week ago, and somehow Daniel Jones throws for I say something. 236 today. The Giants. Maybe the Browns are bad. The, the, the Giants need to be in uh, in the market. They, they, I don't care if they have to trade up um, this year. They got to be pick num- They got to be picking number one for quarterback. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. What's but it? Daniel, you, you that that neighbors, um, uh, Malik neighbors, the the receiver. He's a superstar. Hmm. And you're going to need a quarterback to get him the ball. How about coach? Would you would you clean house with the coach as well? It seems like he's, he's in done. the hot seat too. He's done. Oh, He's, I got a. You know what's going to fix the coach and the GM this year? Saquon Barkley is blowing it up in Philadelphia, and the oh, I still want to go to that hard knock scene when the owner is saying, "If Saquon leaves to the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm not going to sleep well at night." That was a weird trade. You never trade in the division, and they did. Strange. Okay, and well, let's a... jump to Philly, New Orleans, then. You just gave me you just gave me a good uh, what if question. I'm gonna save it though. Philly at New Orleans. Philly, I had on my list is this team needs a bounce back from that rough Monday night loss. They go into New Orleans. Wasn't it like New Orleans had three points <laughs> by the fourth quarter? Yeah. What happened to the the sixty something points New Orleans? There's not a whole, yeah, it's like it's, it wasn't a whole lot to talk about in this game either. It was kind of an uneventful game. I think we were expecting a lot. But more. it was close. It was. But it was close. The, but the 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 unsung, I mean, not the unsung, but the 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 hero for Philadelphia, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, the big run got him got him jazzed. Yep, it, special players, man. He that that guy. He, he. Well, this was an interesting week for garbage time because we had some games that looked over, and then the team clawed their way back, and it actually made the last five minutes interesting to watch. In New Orleans, somehow claws their way back. And then Philly has this last drive, and Philly converts a third and 15 to kind of shut the door on New Orleans. I th- I think this was a big win for Philly because that was a hard body blow they took Monday night against uh, Kirk Cousins and the Kirk Cousins Awards. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> and they bounced back and got the, got the win. What do you think about this? Not a hot take, not a best innovation. Should we just ban the tush push? It just seems like it should be unfair. Well, in now, some what, way, but they uh, New Orleans did stop them once. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, New Orleans but, got back in the game just the last drive. Philly, Philly shut them down, and they they converted a third and fifteen to do it. Yeah, on the uh, in lot, the air. Not a whole much to talk about the game, but just Saquon Barkley, great game. Barkley and is New Orleans got slide potential? I'm not saying it's time to panic, but. They're not as, they're not as, they're, you know, people were already putting them in the Super Bowl in New Orleans this year after the, <laughs> the 2 0 start. You know, you always hear people say, like, There's, this is not a time to panic. I've never heard anybody say it is time to panic. 
<laughs> no, no one, no one, no one's ever like, "Hey, it's finally, it's time to panic." We haven't talked about the Niners yet, so it's it's that, that, that's my. Oh, we're topic. getting there. We will get there. New Orleans' next three games are Atlanta Chiefs and Buccaneers. Tough schedule as well, so they'll be tested as well. I think they have slide potential, and I really hate to say it. Last note on Cleveland: there was a Winst- Jameis Winston sighting for one play. I you saw that. Need- Uh, All right, let's keep going on the early games. Don't worry, I'm getting to your 49ers. Chicago at Indianapolis. Chicago loses again 16-21. to The Bears look like they're a year away, to be honest. There's so much, like, near good plays with the Bears. I think they blew it on fourth and shorts three times during this game. And there was more weird penalties. Chicago messed up the timeouts again. Yeah. And they just have the sad body language right now after the Caleb fumble. Just the body language is, is bad, but you can tell there's talent. But I just think they're a year away. Did you see their Hail Mary at the end yeah. of the first half? <laughs> no, they got, they got something, you know, they're not, I'm not saying they're bad, but I'm with you on the body language. I noticed that too about yeah. them. So it's something to look out for. But hey, Colts won. They won their first game of the year. So that's, you know, they're, right. they're moving. They didn't look that great either but they look good enough to beat the bears i'll give them that yeah body language is the scariest thing with bears right now for me like you can the colts are going to want to stay as close to the texans as possible you know um so they don't want the texans to get too big a lead in the division this early in the year now the colts are the team i could think like rip off six straight wins in november type of team you know that's the the one where i would say that's that's one to keep on like anthony richards like just gets hot maybe there's a trade that happens yeah. and helps the team. That one is one I could see. Uh, okay, now we go to Green Bay, Tennessee. The Will Levis. Ah, that one, the, 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 this, the Tennessee Titans are bad. Will Levis is secretly Kurt Cousins with a mask on game. I'm going to put them right now as possible. Tennessee the bad. Team in the league, yeah. Okay, but is Green Bay good? They're not they're not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me your lawyer answers. No, they're not bad. I definitely but, underrated Malik Willis. Yeah. The guy he, can throw. He's running really well. Not, he doesn't make the big bad. mistake. He's not playing bad. What's the word on Jordan Love? How long is he gone for? Do we know? He is... I, 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 did they put him on the IR? I believe they did. Yeah. I don't, I don't four, know what the games, IR means. So maybe two more games? Well, if that's the case, I, I don't think the Green Bay Packers are really struggling at quarterback. No. So they oddly are sitting in pretty good shape. And Not we bad. thought we thought they could have been disaster zone, but they did play Tennessee. So I'll pump the brakes a little bit there. Last early game, LA Chargers at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ugly win, but all three of Pittsburgh's wins have been kind of ugly. But I think this was Justin Fields' best game. Yeah. He's kind of found something there. I think he's going to, I think it's his job now. You think so? Yeah, it's got to be. Three wins, three starts. Russell Wilson is getting really good at clapping for plays on the sideline. What do you Fields think? Pretty- you like you like Justin Fields? Would you bet on him? I would mean, I'm going to bet on that defense. Yeah, that's true. He's got a defense first, offense second. That's helping a first year QB. Right. Let's see here what he did. He threw for one. He didn't throw a lot. 161 through 25, 25 completions. One pick, two sacks. Yeah. So maybe I'm just looking. He has really good highlight plays. Numbers were pretty normal. But 3-0 and is 3-0. and That's what I love about week three. We can say those numbers are pedestrian, below average, but three wins in a row – you can't throw out. So Pittsburgh, I think, is a threat. Yeah. Okay, so you like them too. And Chargers, you're still in on. I, I'm still in on them. Okay. Herbert, what's your concern level with Herbert? Say he no, can't I mean, go. no concern because they need him. I mean, it, it all depends on him. If he can't go next week, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm a little more concerned than you are, it seems, on the Chargers. Well, that was the early games, which I have now dubbed the clean out your refrigerator games or yeah. go back or go to the garage and vacuum your car games. Right. 
because there was nothing really that intrigued me, and yet there was a couple close games in here, but nothing, nothing really intrigued me that much. And there were so many. It's too many games early, NFL, because now we move to the late games. So let's get one of ourselves out of the way first. Do you want to do San Francisco or do you want to do San Francisco? I don't want to talk too much about it. Well, here's the thing. We're hurt. (laughs) Well, we have to cover it. We're journalists, Omar. We're, 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 the Niners are hurt. I mean, no Kittle, you know, no Debo, McCaffrey's Mm -hmm. out. And that's a lot of talent, you know, that's, that, that's a big chunk of your game plan. So, you know, and, and, and that's been the thing with the Niners, uh, uh, you know, the last few years, it's just, you know, the championship windows, it's been closing on, on the Niners, but that's also, it's been hard to stay healthy. Um, You know, when you lose a player that gets his knee, uh, rips his knee because he's on his way to the, you know, from on the way to the field from the sideline in the Super Bowl before the yeah. first play of the game. It's just, you have the injury bug, you know, and looking back on it, that was bad mojo. Yeah. That was, and, a bad and here's the problem mojo. though. There's also more concern. It was a game. The Niners should have, the, the Niners had it, you know, the, the, the Rams came back uh, and the Niners right. did not put the Rams away and the Rams looked uninspired. You know, that, that Jawan Jennings was torching the Rams. And next yeah. thing you know, it's like they, they hung around and then next thing you know, they're tied and now they're, you know, they're getting stops and, you know, so it was, it was disappointing, it, but last yeah, week the Rams concerned. were dead. You're right. They hung around. Well, I'm, I'm going to take the opposite take though. Omar, like Purdy was good today. He wasn't I think the bad. Niners um, defense and special teams were the problem today. Yeah, they were the problem. I'm, they, they were the problem today. Cause the Rams and Matthew Stafford in particular has perfected the, throw the deep ball and either get a big catch or a pass interference play. Yeah. You know, it worked both ways for them today. Like it's a special talent to somehow get that one-on-one, throw it up and only a good thing will happen to it. So I say special teams let them down. They had that missed field goal. Yep. And then the Rams had the punt return. Yeah. That put them on the 50 and then they got the win. So I, I don't think the 49ers offense is their problem. No, to be honest, it, it I a, think it's, it was a defense problem. Pur- Purdy yeah, Purdy had some great plays today. Yeah, there was also a huge drop. Uh, Bell dropped one at the very end of the game that really could have helped the, the Niners out a lot. So the Niners are sitting at one and two. What is going on with them? Like going forward next week for the Niners, we got to get healthy. We just got to must- get healthy. It got to yeah. get healthy. It's it, and it is time. It is must wins. We, you know. Um, well, next week they have the Patriots. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we should win that game, but you know, who knows? Um, we got, it's not easy. It's not easy. They got Patriots, Cardinals, Seahawks, and then chiefs. That's a, that's a tough run. That could be a tough run. They need a boost on the defense and they, it would be nice if one, one more guy in offense got healthy, you know, but you don't have a concern really. Like nothing is like, Oh, this could be the regression year. No, no, no. It, 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 oh, okay. You're positive I'm, still. I'm so positive. They still, they still got a lot of talent. You can't take that, but but we got to get healthy, you know? Yeah. But they never get healthy. Every year, the, the nah, Niners no, are like... They're, they're just getting... Uh, that's the problem. It's just, it's we, if we're not healthy, we're not going to win, so... But you're not concerned. You're, you're okay. Like, I can't... I, I, I got... These guys have to get healthy. <laughs> they, <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm trying my to... Concern, my concern is if they don't get healthy, yeah, we're not going to win. I mean, that's okay. Like, All right. That's much talent. Okay. I'm trying about. to, I'm trying to gauge your, your mindset right now. It's week three. I know. Omar. So, um, yeah, the Niners, they look really good. <laughs> they really do. And somehow the Rams are just feisty. Like I said it last week about Minnesota, they always play the Niners tough and yeah. the Rams are the same way. They always play the Niners tough. Right. And the Rams got the bounce back win. As well. Like this was a week for the bounce back win, I think. Uh, And then last note on the Niners, how about that Hail Mary lateral play that the Niners did on the very last play? That was pretty neat. That shit almost worked, man. Yeah, it almost worked. Do teams practice that the crazy lateral play? You know, they they practice the Hail Mary. I feel like the lateral play, if practiced or or set up right, could work. We've never seen one work, have we? No, that was a good, that was a good one. Yeah. Because they always get to like the second or third lateral and then it goes to an offensive lineman and then mm-hmm. they throw the ball forward or something. But this Niners one almost worked. I thought that was 
that was going to be the miracle win type of thing. But fun game. The missed field goal put them in bad, bad juju. All right, you want to go to my pathetic team? Let's just let's get that one out of the way too. All right. This was by far the happiest I was going into the week. <laughs> We're like, remember last week I was like, hey, every team should get to play the Panthers. <laughs> they bench. Yeah, you feel bad for Bryce Young because it seems like don't don't scapegoat him. I mean, the Raiders, I, again, I think this was more our reflection of the Raiders, to be honest with you, today. Yeah, bigger bigger win or, or bigger loss. What, I mean, the, the Panthers obviously that? needed it, but I was you we weren't expecting much from the Panthers. We were expecting a lot from the Raiders. Yeah, I, yeah. Then I'm agreeing. This is a bigger loss for. This is a much bigger people. loss. Yeah. And and you know, I, I think Antonio Pierce talking at the end saying that some Raiders made a business decision today. And yeah, that, I read that he's pissed. And they're going to have to make a business decision. <laughs> that doesn't sound very good on some players. Um, Devontae Adams looks miserable in 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 Vegas. You know, which is how can you how when you think about that? Doesn't he have a beautiful home? And you know, he's living in the. A uh, nice home in the desert now in Vegas, and you got all the restaurants, the show, real estate in Nevada, yeah, the, the real estate, the restaurants, the country clubs. You got all that in Vegas, and you look miserable out there. Yeah, well, You're the highest has... paid wide receiver in, I guess Justin Jefferson is now, but you're the highest. You're one of the highest paid receivers, and you look miserable in Las Vegas. He, he had another bad drop today. I mean, he can blame himself for some yeah. of this. He had two drops last week. One would have been for a touchdown. This week, he had a first down that got, or is one of those ones where you catch it and the DB strips it from you. And then he had a miscommunication with Minshew on the INT. I don't know who's, whose fault it was. They both kind of reacted like it was their own fault. <laughs> so I'm not sure. So I, I don't think he looked good today and not by anybody's fault than his own they targeted him a few times there's some garbage time catches in there too i don't know what's going on but i think it's antonio pierce time to either steer this ship or say fuck it <laughs> because they did the interview with him like between quarters i think it was halftime or after the first and antonio pierce was all sweaty you know he doesn't wear a hat so you just see the sweat on his on his bald head He's also he wears, always wearing a he's always wearing a hoodie. He's always wearing a hoodie in, in Las Vegas. He was sweaty, Antonio Pierce, from like five minutes into the game. He was pissed, and the Raiders were not prepared. They didn't show up. Crosby is missing plays because he's got a little injury going. And Minshew was Minshew. <laughs> By that I mean he has one good drive. And in the rest of the game, he goes into offensive coma, which I have written Did down not. here. Raiders Did offense not. goes non existent. Did not they, look good. They got stopped multiple times on third and shorts and a couple fourth and shorts where they went for it. Like they can't get two yards. Yep. It was ugly. It was really, really ugly to it. And then on top of this, <laughs> you played the Panthers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and they, they just look like a mess the last few weeks, right? Offense was bad or Raiders offense was bad. But the Raiders' defense was the thing we talked about all week. We're like, this is a top three team. And they go into this game, and they couldn't figure out that when they played zone, Andy Dalton sliced them up. When they pressured him, he threw two-yard passes, or they sacked him. They couldn't figure that out till like, the fourth quarter. I think there was a third and 15, and Dalton stood back there like a, like a fucking pro and just nailed someone on this crossing route for 16 yards. I was like, what was that? <laughs> How yeah. can you let this happen? That was a bad, that was a bad game. Uh, and by the Raiders. third quarter, get this too, Carolina lost both their safeties and Thielen, their good receiver to on offense. They were really banged up and yet they look like a playoff team today. And then I wrote down, can Tom Brady come out of the booth and play for the Raiders? Like, Ugh. could he, could he physically, like legally, could he do it? What would it take? Cause I would, I would welcome it at this point. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, it's they're they're in a they're in a tough spot because I don't, that, that's that's a team that lacks identity right now. Yeah, they really do. We've been trying so hard to run the ball the first three weeks has not worked. They caught fire for a little bit with Baltimore last week, and this week it was the worst of all worlds. Couldn't do anything, and it goes back to 
I think Minshew looks totally lost out there. He looks really, really lost. And Aiden O'Connell got in for some garbage time at the end. I wouldn't be surprised if if Aiden gets a start either next week or the week after if it it could it could happen. Is still bad. So if you're an outsider, what do you think the Raiders need? Oh, quarterback. Besi- <laughs> besides I'm everything. Sorry. I mean <laughs> quarterback. Quarterback. Um Can the, we... running game, the running game has to be better. Running game still bad. Yep. Would you go the midseason trade route? Would you start looking? You always keep your options open, but well, put yourself in the GM spot. Like, we want a quarterback change. What would you do? Would you trade? Or are you tanking for next year? I'm thinking a trade is out there somewhere. But who? But who? Can we get Flacco? I mean, like, what about you gotta, Flacco? You, you, you know, like, all you can really do is you don't want Flacco right now. Would you think Bryce Young is worth trying to find out if he wants to mm. resurrect his career? No, he's too skinny. It looks like looks like he can play point guard for like a D two ba- uh, college. You're not too careful. You're going to end up with Russell Wilson. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Omar, let's let's cut all this out. Russell, <laughs> don't put the Russell Wilson curse on me in week three. Um, well, I, I think Flacco, in the sense like Joe Flacco last year, got the Browns going and got them to the playoffs. There's always a QB who comes off the couch and plays yeah. good for a team. So I'm thinking, who's our Joe Flacco? This year. And I, I'm definitely on the phone if I'm the GM of the Raiders. Oh, yeah. I'm I mean, like, who's gotta, out there? Yeah, you got to keep your options open. Oh, you know what? On Kansas City, just to go back real quick, you know what I'm scared about Kansas City? You know who the backup is for Kansas City, the quarterback? Who? Carson Wentz. Oh, it's Wentz. That's right. Yeah. That's bad mojo. Get him off this team. Why do you have Carson Wentz on your team? I don't like it. I'm scared. For Kansas City. One twisted ankle and Carson Wentz has to take snaps. All right. You want to talk another head scratcher for the for the day? What's that? Baltimore at Dallas. Then Baltimore, Dallas got back into that game. How this was the ultimate garbage time game, wasn't it? Yeah. They Dallas both needed to bounce back. Dallas made it a game. And they came back. They had scored 19 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. And they were, you know, a defensive stop away from getting the ball back. And I don't know if you remember my hot take from two weeks ago, Omar. A new field goal distance record will be set this year. And the Cowboys kicker kicked a 65-yarder in this game. Yeah, he's got a boot. My hot hot take came true. Yeah. So Dallas went from, like, fighting on the sideline. That kid's going to kick a 70-yard field goal soon. (laughs) <laughs> he's going to break his own record. Yep. I thought Dallas saved a lot of face today. It was ugly in Dallas for like two and a half hours. And then all of a sudden they have this comeback. The crowd is into it. Dak looks good. And I'll, I almost feel like they didn't really lose this game. Like they feel good about this. Like we came back where it was fucking dark. Yeah. They're, they're that, not, they're well, not, what do you, not, what are your feelings football. on Dallas? They're not a good, they, they look good against the Browns. Congratulations. This does nothing for you. Do you think they make the playoffs? Mm -mm. They have no, because I think the Eagles are going to, it's going to be one play, one team from that division. And I think the Eagles are going to win the division. And let's flip it. How we're on Baltimore. Did Baltimore do anything for you today? I mean, for the, for the first three quarters. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they were awesome. Intercepting. Yeah. Yeah. And Lamar skinny Lamar is no, they got like, they got they have concerns too. Yeah. Yeah, Baltimore gets the win. Yeah, this was definitely a game where I thought I was gonna have these things to say about it. And then by the end of it, I was like, maybe that wasn't such a bad outing for Dallas. Like maybe they maybe they showed us something. That was a really odd game. They were down twenty eight to six. Yeah. <laughs> and in a touchdown, an onside kick and and all of a sudden they're down three and they just had to stop Baltimore and they couldn't, they couldn't stop them. Right. Weird, weird game. And then the last game of the afternoon was Detroit at Arizona. Arizona is just a fun team. They just, they just lose games in a really fun way. <laughs> yeah. Convinced. Yeah. But I got that this was a grinded out win for Detroit. What and they did think? it. They, they, they grinded it out and they didn't grind it out against Tampa Bay, but it's nice to go on the road, get a grind out win. And so, 
they're they're I still think they're a tough team. And I again with them, even though they lost last week, I didn't think it was time to panic if you're Detroit. Um mm -hmm. so maybe they I mean they're a team that could easily, you know, go for you know, win four straight, you know. Yeah, you're still high on Detroit then. They scored yeah, I, still, I still am, yeah, for sure. They got out to the early lead. They scored zero points in the second half, Detroit. So it just turns into defense on the other end. Are you 100% confident in Jared Goff, or do you think he's going to be the reason they lose three games this year, four games? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I haven't I have seen anything from him yet. No, but I, I got confidence in him. I I, I think the, the Vikings are, as as far as the, the better team today, the Vikings, I think, passed them in the NFC as far as the top dog in the NFC. Yeah, I'd go with you on that as far as like power rankings. Yeah. I think the Vikings are are better than, than uh, Detroit. And, you know, like we were saying, the next couple of weeks are going to be very telling for the Vikings. Yeah, I got it. It's a grinded out win. Arizona is just good enough to lose close games. <laughs> I got it in my notes here. Yeah. So Arizona's really fun though. Like, God, yeah, they were good. like, they are fast. They're fast. There's an athletic um, team. Yeah. I, I, I want to see them go on a run. I really do. They're just like the fun team. I like to keep yeah. that. They're, they're like the the girl in high school who isn't really that attractive, but she wears glasses. And nice. you're like, I wonder if she'd take her glasses off, get contacts. I bet she'd look really good. That's Arizona for me, the girl with glasses. Were you impressed at all with the Jets' Thursday night win? Uh, yeah, I mean, Aaron Rodgers looked really good. Um, it's the best he's looked so far this year. Yeah. No, that's not a, it's not a bad team. They got talent. Um, they got talent. I liked how he told his coach that it's too early. It's kind of his, you know, the hug. Kind of, yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> he gave him a, a little stare down too. But no, 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 no. The, the, but the real true test for the Jets is going to be how they do when they play teams like the Bills. How they do when they play teams like the Chiefs, and how mm -hmm. they do against the Texans. That's the che that's the test for the Jets. Rogers surprisingly mobile in that yeah. game. He looked good on the run too, which gives you confidence that his injury, yeah, is healed. So. Your nemesis, Aaron Rodgers, like you're, you're showing him a little love. That's yeah, he's he's, he's, he's well, yeah, he's Hall of Famer. Oh wow, this is a new take. Oh, that, 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 that's not a take. I mean, he's an automatic Hall of Famer. Is that's yeah, but you didn't fun. like him all last year. You were no, like I angry. I can't stand him. them. I can't stand them. But he's he's a <laughs> Hall of Famer. Okay, all right, very diplomatic of you. All right, you want to do some awards? Let's do it. This is an interesting awards week. I uh, I got some creative ones. So just as far as who looked good, I got all the bounce back teams, Baltimore, Philly, and even through the giants in there. What the hell who looked bad? I had, um, Dallas Cowboy fans for three and a half quarters and Vegas fans for the entire game. We, we look, there were some angry looks on fans faces, but as far as awards go, most memorable moment of the week, I went with the Dallas comeback. That hour okay. of, of football was fun to watch. <laughs> That's, that was a good hour of football. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Antonio Pierce saying that the sit business decisions are going to have to be made in, in, in Dallas. Uh, I mean, oh. in, in Vegas. That's 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 interesting. I, I, I wonder who he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting pick. I, I like it because I'm in total agreement with, with the effort level. Oh, there was... No, no, I, I got an award. Save it, save it. Uh, next award... The cringeworthy award, which um, I'm thinking of just changing it to the um, Kirk Cousins award because he's always cringeworthy, <laughs> but we'll keep it the cringeworthy award. I got number one, Josh McDaniels, coach of the Miami Dolphins hair. I got the, I love it. you like the hair, huh? I like it. I don't think the humidity is helping his look. It's very, it's very poofy and. And uh, naturally, like, uh, sweaty. And it's kind of thin, too. So it looks like 70s and 80s-ish when, when dudes were going bald, but they still grew their hair long. Yep. I also got as a nominee the Will Levis mayonnaise commercial. Have you seen that? Yes. Oh, that's horrible. It's not helping that he's not very good either. Uh, here's a award that I, I could take back. Midway through the Dallas game when they're losing 28 to three or 20 to six. How about Jerry Jones in the owner's booth saying, I paid Dak, Dak Prescott. How much? I got that as a cringeworthy moment. Yeah. 
definitely cringe. And then another cringe worthy. This is when Dallas was getting blown out. Dak throws throws a ball just up for grabs, and the Dallas receiver has to commit a really bad intentional pass interference to stop an INT. Yeah. And he just grabs the dude by the collar, throws him down, and just walks to the sideline. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that's 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 tough days. But then they made the comeback. But as the winner, I, I might go the mayonnaise commercial. I want to go with uh, Jamie Foxx on his live Instagram, uh, shutting off what he reposted from Jerry Jones, talking about the size of a player's penis. Um, what was that? I missed that. Yeah, D- Jerry Jones was. Uh, uh, Jamie Foxx put turned on his uh, Instagram live, and mm-hmm. I guess he was observing Dallas Cowboys mini camp or training camp. And Jerry Jones is obviously he's a celebrity. He's hanging out with Jerry Jones. And Jerry Jones is talking about a, a player, but he's talking about his physical attributes. He's saying, you know, he's six two, hunt, you know, two hundred and forty pounds. And he says nine and a half inch. And, and it's just why would Jerry why Jones would, said that, huh? Yeah. And so then Jamie Foxx shuts off his uh, inst- but it's it's been reposted. So you might want to look into that one. Oh, okay. I'm definitely gonna watch that. Well, I don't want to live in a world where Jerry Jones has a small wang. He's a he's a big wing guy. Well, he, he's talking about another player though. Oh, he was. Oh, he thought he was talking about himself. Who is he talking about? I don't know, but he's. he's oh, totally I'd like to know that. He's describing a player. Hmm. Jerry Jones doesn't doesn't uh, acquire any players with small wings. Like, apparently not. Uh, new category for the combine. Ah, we'll skip it. We'll skip it. <laughs> Next award, most memeable moment. I got a good one because one happened today in a game as well. How about awkward half hugs? We had the Aaron. Where did you see it? Well, we had the Aaron Rodgers one. one. Yes. But there was another one today. Um, Who had it? Let me look here. It was in a game today. It might have been the Chicago one where there was another weird hug. Like they couldn't get the high five right. They were trying to fist bump, but they didn't get it right. So I'm going to go awkward half hugs. I think you can make a meme out of this week. You know, you do lots of different captions. So an awkward half hug gets my memeable moment for the week. Okay. I like that one. What do you got? I, I like that awkward. Well, obviously because of the, there's definitely a meme in the, in the uh, coach Sala uh, Aaron Rodgers exchange. <laughs> yeah. The awkward half hug. All right. Best innovation award. I got cleats. You know, we haven't had one real bad footing game except for that Brazil game this year so far. Yeah. So who do you think invented cleats? That's a pretty good idea. And it has largely been unchanged for 70 years. Just little spikes on your feet. And and we're still using them today. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that's a good one. I'm going to go with my, my, my best innovation is that it is the roof, the roof, the rooftop on these domes right now. You can see outside and see the sky. Mm. I like that. The retractable roof. Good innovation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next award. The soundtrack award. This one we've done uh, some weeks and this one we haven't some weeks. So in regards to my team, mainly, I was going to throw Dallas in here, but they came back. In, gar- in regards to my sad team, I gave my team the soundtrack of, remember that sad animal rescue song from the 90s <laughs> where they, oh, where they yes. showed? I gave my team that song uh, from uh, Sarah McLaughlin, sad oh, yeah. animal rescue song, because you could just show the faces of, of the Raiders fans at one point and played the sad song and we could all feel bad for each other. That's my sad soundtrack award for the week. What do you got? You got a soundtrack award? We are the champions by the Chiefs, uh, by by the by Queen to apply to mm. the Chiefs. The, they're, I mean, they're the champions right now. They're the number one team. They're winning close games. Uh, you know, they're 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 mm. the they're the team you got to beat. This early in week three, huh? Yeah, they're they're, they're going to be around. Would you? Where would you play the song? Is this locker room? Is this bus ride home? Where do you think this would be best used? I think this is bus ride home. It's pretty good. Yeah. You've already done the coach's speech. You've showered up. Yeah. And it's almost the part like in the night where the party needs to go up to a second level. Yeah. You know, it's like, like what are we doing next? And you like hit the music. Let's go to uh, this place is uh we catered a restaurant, whatever. 
Nice. Man, I wish I was part of that. All right, the Sunday double feature. So this Sunday, I thought a lot of these themes of these games were a little on the dull side. It's interesting, offense is so down this year in the NFL. So a lot of give and take, a lot of back and forth. Not a ton of action, but the action we did get was pretty good. So you know what I gave this week as the Sunday double feature was the movie Pulp Fiction. A oh, lot of a, a lot one. of dialogue, but only a couple of real action sequences, but dialogue that you kind of were hanging hanging on the edge of your seat on. So I went with Pulp Fiction as my Sunday double feature. I'm not going to go with the movie. I'm going to go with the series on Netflix, the 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 Lyle and Eric Menendez. Uh, <laughs> Did we bring that first, up last week? I saw the first two episodes, and it's pretty intense. Oh, it's out. Okay, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, a couple of rich rich dudes. Yeah, we crazy have story. It. How many episodes is it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know. Hmm. But you're two in, huh? I'm two in. I don't like when these documentaries go like six and eight episodes. I'll, I'll never make it through that. Yep. I watched that Scott Peterson one, that's on Netflix the other day, and I think it was three, which I think is the perfect number. But there was no new information in it. It was the same story we've heard. I thought, I thought there was going to be a twist. There was nothing. Nothing new in there at all. I don't learn anything. Might as well watch the Aaron Hernandez one. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to throw in an award today just for this week because I thought it was good. This one's called the Best Name Award. Atlanta has a receiver on their team called Ray Ray McLeod. I like that. I get that's like that could be like a detective. That could be like a, a TV series guy. That could be a doctor, like a doctor TV series. Best name, Ray Ray McLeod, a radio host. And then in the Maybe Awards, I, I gave the location to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, kind of like you did. Okay. Excellent location. The roof was open. Oh, that was I, nice. I give it to that. Yeah. Would you stick with that or do you have a different uh, I stick with those. I, stay, I, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Best quote. This was from the Raiders game. The announcer which i think is spiro didis for the raiders he does a lot of the raiders game the raiders are kind of losing bad and his quote is the raiders they got to and he just trailed off he never finished his statement he was like they really got to (laughs) he didn't say anything after that i think i think that surmised the the raiders game for my best quote of course collinsworth i could rip off like eight different collinsworth ones but i had to go raiders today What's your, what's your best I really, quote? I didn't really get many quotes today because I only saw the games. I really didn't see many uh, press conferences, anything like that. Yeah, the press conferences are would be nice that we had more visibility on. Like, I only watch the press press conferences like on Mondays, in case someone says something. Like, I never but get you to know, watch them. When you them. think about it, it's like you get very little of that if you're watching Red Zone all day. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's your strategy? Cause I think I finally have a strategy for Sunday ticket. How oh, do you I, do just, I, I stick to the red zone, but then I'll go. I'll, but then when my team is playing, I'll go to the Niner game. Gotcha. One TV or do you do multiple TVs? One TV. One TV. So this early games, you did the four square and then you switch it to the, to the Niners just outright. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I think I'm doing now, I'm doing the four square, on the TV, and then I'll get on my laptop or tablet the one game I want to watch with sound. Oh, that's, that's good. That's what I'm doing so far. That's my strategy so far. There really should be a tutorial on how to best use NFL Sunday ticket, like on YouTube. <laughs> you make some money. Yeah, like what's the best way? Someone has got to have a strategy. Is it two TVs? Can you do it with one? Do you need a tablet? I would like to know. Uh, best quote we did next award. I got a nominee for this one. This was our best play call slash coaches award. And this one I gave to Mike Tirico and Chris Collinsworth because at the beginning of the game, they're doing the little intros for both teams. And Tirico goes, the chiefs are banged up on offense. They've had average offensive numbers so far. They got no Pacheco. What do you expect, Chris Collinsworth? And he goes, fireworks. I'm like, well, where did you get that from? Like, yeah. defend, defend your argument. And 
I don't know where that came with Chris, Chris Collins. And by the way, Chris Collins, they scored 22 points. So yeah. where are the fireworks? I mean, don't, you yeah. can just say fireworks. And that's the thing. And like, I also want to say, didn't you guys like tell each other what your opening question is going to be so you can speak <laughs> so you can speak intelligent about it? He's like, the Chiefs are banged up. No Pacheco. What's going on? It's going to be fireworks, Mike. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Travis Kelsey's going to catch 18 balls. I'm sure of it. Uh, do you have an award for best play call slash coaches award? I'm going to go at my, everything Mike Tomlin's doing with that defense in Pittsburgh. Wow, just carte blanche on Mike Tomlin. Carte blanche huh? on them, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sold on his defense. I like how he dresses like someone in witness protection on the sidelines, too. Yeah. His beard seems longer. He's got the hat all low. He's got sunglasses. He's very Classic. incognito there. You like Tomlin, huh? Classic. Okay. Last award. Who won the week? I got head coach for the Carolina Panthers. I got to give it to him. Dave Canales. He probably had the hardest week going into the game. Different quarterback. They sucked two weeks in a row. Everybody thought they're going to lose. And they come out and look like a playoff team. <laughs> I gave it to him for who won the week. And also gave it to just teams in general that we thought sucked. Actually, we're good this week. Giants, Panthers. Give them the award. Teams we thought sucked. I, I like that. I, I'm going to go with that. Broncos, you can throw in Broncos, there. Broncos, yeah. Put Broncos in there, yeah. You know, Colts got their first win. So teams that we thought sucked may not be that yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah, teams that we thought sucked were kind of like a B movie that's like always on TNT or the USA Network. And then you actually watch it and you're like, hey, this is cool. I I like La Femme Nikita. I like Men of a Certain Age TV series. I think that's that's the comp. It's a made-for-TV movie that's actually good. Well, we did all the awards, and this Monday, because we still have to predict Monday night, two games, Omar. Why are there two games? I think they're just trying. I don't know why. I don't know why. This, uh, it's always seemed last time we've had the two-game issues because of it's been weather or COVID, some reason for, you know. But no, we have two games um, on a Monday night. Or, or season openers. But this year, they didn't have one. They did it. Yeah. And I think they're well, doing it multiple times this year. Are they really? Like, I, yeah. I have to say, like, sure, football's fun and all NFL, but you were going to wreck some families. Like, we can't watch this many games. Like, you got Sunday. <laughs> That's it. You can't give us Monday as well, because as soon as I come home from work, now I have to watch two games? Come yeah. on, NFL. That being said, I'm sure I'm going to watch them anyway. Yeah, of course. Jacksonville at Buffalo, I think, is the first one. Hey, I'm going to go on this one. Buffalo 24, Jacksonville 13. Really? Jacksonville, you still kind of like, though, you said earlier. I do, but not against Buffalo. Okay. Josh Allen, good game. He'll have a decent Maybe. game. Josh Allen seems like he's in the phase of his career where he's indestructible, too. Like, he's doling out the hits when he runs. Okay, I like Buffalo, too. However, it's been such a weird week that I wouldn't be surprised if Jacksonville wins. I'm just going solely based off of Mojo. Okay, we'll see. Next game, Washington at the 0-2 Cincinnati Bengals. Finally, the Bengals will be another one team that they, they're going to mm. come off that. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll follow the Ravens' lead, and they'll, they'll, they'll get a win. So you're going with the two favorites. How's Joe Burrow going to look in this game? And by the way, I'm not talking about his stats. I'm talking about his hair. Oh, it's going to be messy. It's, it's, it's going to be messy. very, very, very bleached and messy. Do you think it's cool or not? I like it. I think the length is right now. Like when it was just short and just platinum blonde, it looked weird. Now I think he's cool. Yeah, I like it. I, I, think, I think the offense gets right because Joe Burrow's hair is right. And I think they get the win. They're playing at home to Washington. Again, I am not going to be surprised at all if both these underdogs win because it's been that wacky of a week. But I'm going to go Jacksonville, and I'm going to go Cincinnati. Oh, I like that. All right, that was week three in the NFL. Fall is looming. There's some 3 and O's. There's some 0 and 3s The season has officially started in my book. So... For me, Patrick Ramirez and Omar Carmona. We'll see everybody next week. Thanks, Omar. Good night.